This is the Monday, September 20th edition of Native America Calling. I'm your host, Harlan Nicasato. Tradition, honor, respect, wellness. Certainly these four tenets are what we would like to see instilled in our children as we prepare them for life. But how do you feel about children learning tradition, honor, respect, and wellness through the martial arts? There's a relatively new program that's been launched out of Ontario, Canada, that is working its way across Turtle Island and reaching out to tribal communities, and in particular, our Native youth, to help them build self-esteem and confidence through the ancient fighting art of Muay Thai. Now today we have the founder of the Iron Eagle Project, the spearhead, if you will, and his name is Robert Pelgian. And he has been in the martial arts and physical fitness business for more than 25 years now. And he believes a martial arts school is a place where a child will develop more self-control, improve their confidence level, learn respect, learn good sportsmanship, and get in great physical shape, increase their focus in life and in school, all in a safe and structured environment. So what do you think? I mean, would you enroll your child in a martial arts school to help give them structure, learn how to fight, defend themselves? All right, I want you to think about that. Now, Pelgier has seen the kids who are hurting, who are lost, those kids growing up in our tribal communities who are empty, who are hungry for something other than the life that they're living, the game life drugs and alcohol life, kids who want a better life than what they're seeing. And he truly believes that the Iron Eagle Project can help them. Because as you'll hear, uh, it's not just punching and kicking and putting somebody in some kind of a wrestling hold or a martial arts hold. Right? There's more to it. In fact, Coach Rob, as he's known, also believes that of all the martial arts styles and systems that are offered around the world today, Karate, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, Taekwondo, Kung Fu. He says there is no other style as compatible with native traditions and beliefs as Muay Thai. So, Robert Pelje is our native in the spotlight today. He's the founder of the Iron Eagle Project, a martial arts school that he is promoting, and he wants to start these schools in tribal communities uh, throughout the land. So, what do you think about that? Would, would you want one of these schools in your community? Uh, do you think it would help your kids gain self-confidence and live by a code of honor and respect? You know, could it help? Do you think it could help those kids in your community who need discipline and structure? Or, you know, do you think it would provide a way for young people to take out their aggressions on other kids? Maybe even learn how to do some serious damage when they're fighting out on the streets, right? So what do you think about the martial arts and do you want your child uh, learning them? Us a call if you want to join in. The number is 1 800 99 Native. That's 1 800 996 2848. Join us right now from Burlington, Ontario, where the Iron Eagle Project headquarters are located, is Robert Pelshead or Coach Rob. And he is from the Wigwimikong First Nation, and Anishinaabe, originally from Manitoulin Island. And he has 25 plus years in the health and fitness industry as a facility manager, a fitness consultant, martial arts instructor, and boxing coach. Muay Thai and mixed martial arts coach, and uh, he owns his own fitness facility called Main Event Boxing and MMA Studio, and he developed a national assault prevention program for women and children in Canada in the late 80s and 90s, and he coached Team Ontario Boxing to 12 gold medals and two silver medals in the 2002 North American Indigenous Games. Welcome to the Native American Call, Coach Rob. Welcome, Harlan. How are you? Good. Good to have you with us, and uh, we appreciate you spending time with us. We hope you had a good workout this morning. Oh, I had a great workout, but uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you, Marlon, for having me on. Mm -hmm. It's a great honor, and uh, also like to thank uh, Native America for, for listening today. And uh, hopefully we can be in a community near you and uh, bring this positive program to you. Well, I saw the, uh, the the email that you sent out with your, with your website on it, and it caught my eye. I thought you would... Uh, make a good guest today. And, and first of all, uh, Robert, I wanted to ask you, why did you personally get into the martial arts? What was it, about 30 years ago? 
Well, you know, that's, uh, I'm going to date myself now. <laughs> uh, that, that 30 years is about as long as I've been teaching and training and coaching uh, the martial arts. Uh, I got involved in martial arts at a very young age, probably about uh, eight or nine years old. It's my first uh, endeavor into it. And um, I, I, I enjoyed it, I loved it, it was a great program, and uh, it controlled my wild temper that I had, and you know, it was a positive thing. And then I developed into the sport of uh, boxing and kickboxing, and I never looked back. So uh, here I am in my early 50s, and I'm still doing it. So ba based on that, you, you think this can be something very positive, very productive for our young people out there in our tribal communities and, and our reserves? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, Harlan, many years involved in, in, in seeing so many positive results through martial arts, uh, you know, coaching for 30 years, and, and seeing the changes in the youth uh, over the years has been actually phenomenal. Uh, whether it's martial arts or, or involved in sports or whether it's basketball or football or some type of structured activity for them, it's, it's just great. It's, it's what they really need, you know. We talk about the four directions uh, all the time in the medicine world, but what I see in the communities, uh, what they're saying to me, basically it, it becomes the four misdirections of our youth, you know, which is kind of a, an interesting, uh, you know, uh, analogy of it, you know, because, you know, kids joining gangs, they get involved in drugs and alcohol, no direction in life. These to me are pretty much misdirections, the way I feel, and this is what the people in the community tell me. So, um, tell us a little bit more about the Iron Eagle Project. What is it? Cons what is it consistent? Well, the Iron Eagle Project was, uh, was uh, this has been a, a bit of a brainchild of mine for probably the last ten years, um, because I associated and visited many of our, our nation's uh, communities, and I, I've seen the despair, I've seen the, the lack of uh, direction, and, and pretty much hopelessness, and, and boredom, and, and Every time you hear about suicide and, and things, it just breaks your heart when you hear this, right? And it, it seemed that the youth and the kids were always fascinated by being involved in the martial arts. You know, they just think that's just such a cool thing, you know, and want to learn more about it. And, uh, you know, so many of them have said, see, I wish we had one here. You know, I wish somebody could teach us why you have to go, why you have to be, you know, and uh, you know, just, just, uh, not stay with you, right? So I figured with all the years of experience that I have in developing programs and systems and martial arts facilities and fitness facilities. I figure why not the time has come to get back to the community and bring my knowledge to the community, which is probably a very important thing. Now, how, how are you going to do that? I mean, you're up there in, in Burlington. Your goal is, is to, um, I guess, uh, reach across uh, Canada, reach down here to the United States, uh, including Alaska, maybe even go international at some point. So, so how do you how do you do that, Robert? I know it sounds like a big project, doesn't it? Yeah. But um, Arlen, just want to reinforce the fact that uh, you know I may have started this program, but I have such a uh, wonderful team of people that support me and, and are behind me. I have uh, numerous, numerous instructors all over North America that will assist me on this project numerous instructors and they believe in this project and we will utilize them. We will come to communities, we will go to various locations and teach what I have uh, developed as a, a, for lack of words, a certification program where various people will come out of their, 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 their communities and uh, come to a central area where they will learn uh, in one week program how to facilitate, how to go back to their their community and teaching facilitate this program. Kind of a training and trainers type thing. Yeah, training and trainer. Okay. All right. And then uh, we'll talk more a little bit about, about that in a little bit, but we want to move on and then we'll start taking some calls here. Uh, Robert, but um, tell me more about the uh, Iron Eagle Integrated Warrior System. Like, well, that's where we start to make the connection with, uh, with a lot of youth because uh, so many of them still like to use the word warrior and uh, a lot of the youth today really I, I find that have no no real concept of what a warrior really means, you know, and and, and what a warrior did in, in, in society, uh, you know, what our ancestors were. You know, they have no concept of it. Their their communities that they're joining now are a bit of a culture, maybe it's a gang culture, maybe it's a 
know, he's joining a group that, you know, involved in drugs, alcohol, and, uh, you know, those kind of things, right? So uh, we want to bring back, you know, and that's why martial arts are so important, uh, especially in Muay Thai, is that, you know, you can bring back the teachings of the medicine group, you can bring back the teachings from the grandfathers, you know, and the code of honors that exist and try to live your life by them, you know, like, you know, the seven grandfather teachings, as an example, honesty, humility, truth, bravery, respect, love, and wisdom. I mean, this is what you factor in these teachings in with your training program. And, and it, seemed, it, it would seem like you'd have to almost do that first, because as a parent of an eight-year-old, I don't know if I want, I don't know if I want him going in there with some other kids uh, who are hurt, who have a lot of aggression, uh, who don't have that that foundation. I don't know if I want him going in there because you know they might have a whole different outlook on life than he does, and and you know might end up not having a very good experience. Yeah, that's, that's a, you know, a common concern you know, that, that so many parents have. You know, and, and me dealing with uh, you know, the, the four colors of people out here throughout my life, uh, what I find in, in the urban centers, per, per se, is that uh, martial arts studios and clubs are uh, just being blocked, inundated by parents, bringing their children to martial arts programs that have a form of structure have a form of discipline, have, you know, something that is taught is very important to them. They'll pay any amount of money, you know, to get their kids involved in this type of program because it's healthy. It works off a lot of the aggressions that they do build up and the stressors, you know, it, it comes from a structured environment, it gives discipline, gives the kids challenges, you know, and, and things like that, you know, that, so that's very important. And Richard Money, uh, that's got to be probably a concern or, or at least an interest in our listeners' minds right now. Uh, you know, a lot of our uh, communities out there, uh, you know, our, what, our unemployment rates are sky high. The poverty rates are, are way up there, uh, Coach Rob. So, uh, you know, how are you going to approach that? Well, that, that I've already taken care of. Uh, there's a lot of support from, from the band themselves that will be willing to... Uh, put out a certain amount of money to, to, to build a facility. And that's, that's the key thing that, that the kids have, have uh, addressed to me, that they would really enjoy having their own place, their own facility, uh, where they can go to, where they can actually call home. You know, they, they don't want to share the community centers uh, with the bingo tomorrow night or, or some cultural feast the next night, because they really don't feel connected to the place. Even though it's a great place to go, they would prefer having something that they would call their own. Right? And that's the importance of it. These uh, Iron Eagle uh, gyms, or Iron Eagle centers uh, that will, you know, facilitate drug communities will have their own place. And, I mean, elders can come there and talk with the kids. Uh, there's a lot of cultural things that can be developed in this program. But first of all, you have that building. Uh, the equipment costs are very, very uh, minimal compared to the cost of uh, rehabilitation and the cost of losing a child to future suicide or drugs or addiction. Okay. All right. I'm going to give out the phone number right here. I want to invite our listeners in. And uh, we're talking with Robert Pelger. He is the founder of the Iron Eagle Project. He's the owner of the main event boxing and mixed martial arts studio up in Ontario, Canada. Uh, he's an Anishinaabe from the Winnicong First Nation from uh, Manitoulin Island. If you have questions or comments, you can give us a call. The number is 1-800-99-NATIVE. That's one 800 996-2848. What do you think about the martial arts? I mean, a lot of people are into it. Uh, you know, it's also, but as, as a parent, I mean, uh, as a parent, you know, and, and you're trying to teach your children uh, that it's bad to fight, uh, you know, would you put them in a, a martial arts uh, school? And also, uh, you know, when you think, how do, how do we reach those kids who have been in gangs? Uh, they, they know that uh, it's easy to get a gun and use a gun, and no matter how skilled you are physically, uh, you can still be shot. And um, also, uh, do you think a martial arts school could uh, could help build community? All right, give us a call if you want to join in, 1-800-99-NATIVE. That's 1-800-996-2848. And before we open up the, the phone lines here, um, Coach Rob, you know, I'm sure you've, you've dealt with that question of, uh, you know, doesn't our society want to teach kids that it's that it's bad to fight, that it's wrong to fight? Uh, well, you know, that, 
Of course it is. And, and, and in, in the perfect world, I'm sure we'd all like that. We'd all like to get along and mm -hmm. have no, you know, no fear of violence. But on, on the res reservations, there's a lot of very strong fear of violence and violence that, you know, exists every day. The other thing I wanted to mention about the Iron Eagle Project, there's a wonderful program for teaching uh, women and children self-defense as far as uh, an assault prevention program, okay. which is a very, very important progress. Uh, a program that, that deals with those with the issues that are uh, that are happening out there, spousal abuse and uh, domestic violence and various things like that. So we bring that in too as well. You know, it's a, it's a very strong program. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to open up the phone lines right now, and uh, let's take our first caller. Let's bring in Danny, who's in Phoenix, Arizona, listening on the internet. Welcome to the program, Danny. Hi. Hi, Harlan. Hey, Danny. I'm calling Phoenix. Um, Robert, I really wanted to hear that, you know, really great, like, what you're doing. And um, I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin, and um, there's a lot of, um, oh, probably about 1% Native, and I was a freshman and um, not doing great in school. And my mother put me into a martial arts school, Taekwondo, with my brother, and turned out to be, um, you know, competition between me and him. And, Seven years later, I, you know, got my black belt, and, but to this day, I'm in my early 40s, and I attribute my um, graduating from high school alone from um, my discipline that I obtained from um, in the martial arts in my high school years. And, um, but yeah, it's definitely a really great thing to do here when you're a kid. I, um, I attribute that, like I said. But um, I have a couple uh, questions. Um, what are your... Um, What's the biggest misconceptions that kids come into nowadays with the internet and uh, media that's out there, the really outlandish movies? And um, I guess one more question, how do you deal with kids and the bullying from the internet? What do you tell them about that? And just, um, yeah. Um, yeah hold, hold on, Danny, just hold on there, and we'll throw it to Coach Rob here. Uh, one is, you know, kids are bombarded with all these, uh, I guess, uh, false impressions of what martial arts and is in the first place, uh, Rob, and then and then um, go ahead and answer that, and then we'll come back to the second question. Though. But what what what's the biggest misconception that you have to deal with right now? Um, you know, first of all, he raised excellent points, and and these are the stories that I've heard hundreds and hundreds of times over and over from success stories about getting involved in martial arts. But you know, the point you made about you know, being bombarded via the internet and, and various things. This is true. This is very, very true. And that's why there's a need for a physical presence where a child can turn that computer off, turn that video game off, and get out to a center where they can actually learn something positive, uh, be helpful. We were talking about obesity issues here with children as well, too, getting them moving, uh, getting them in a social environment where they can actually communicate with people other than the computer screen. You know, it's very important that children get to build those social skills as well. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, that's uh, that's where I'm heading with my program. Okay, and then the second part of that question was about the bullying, because we just had a discussion on our show a few days ago about this. It's 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 something that, that almost every kid is having to deal with these days. Coach Rob? Well, you know, the whole aspect of bullying, it's just like anything else, uh, you know, that you bombard your kids with. When you say no to something, they seem to pop up. You know, we, we've said no to bullying, and we have organized, uh, you know, great gangs. You see what I'm getting at? You know, the more we say no to something, the more something else develops. We've said no to drugs and alcohol. We have, you know, meth problems and crack cocaine on our, on, on our reservations these days. So, you know, there, there has to be a center, a place where they can actually go and, and, you know, start to develop positive lifestyle skills. You know, it's so important. The bullying is just an acting out of their inner hurt or their aggression or their lack of respect for one another, uh, their willingness to want to, you know, control one another. And, you know, it's a very negative thing, but it exists and it will constantly exist. And we just got to come up with better little programs. In other words, come up with what I call joining good gangs. Let's join some good gangs for a change. You know? All right. Hey, Danny, thanks for your call from Phoenix. Good to hear from you. All right. Bye. Okay. All right. Let's go to Wilma who's in Pine Ridge, South Dakota, listening on KILI. Hello, Wilma. Hello. How are I you? I just want to comment to him that, you know, there's always a positive and negative about um, things like this, but the kids, the mentality of the strategy of um, martial arts or boxing 
I think the children benefit from it because um, it gives them more of an insight of, of how to how to um, uh, improve their life more or less. My son, uh, for example, he was like 11 years old when he joined boxing, and from his his being involved in boxing, he he's learned how to strategize his life right now. You know. Um, and it's not into fighting, you know, getting into fights or causing fights or whatever, but it, it helped him develop, develop his, um, him into, uh, more or less manhood, knowing that, you know, um, his responsibility as a father, as, um, as a, uh, a male, and, um, uh, his respect for uh, our, our ways of life, our traditional way of life, our culture. Um, he took in some dancing when he was young. He danced four years, and he and that helped him a lot too, you know. And he does understand, you know, about the the um, medicine wheel and all this. And I think, uh, Robert, you using these these strategies in in your program would really benefit the children. It really will. I'm not saying he's perfect, but he, you know, he, he understands these things and, it, and it's a good way, a concept of life for him because he's, he's older now and he has children and he has taken on his responsibilities, you know. But you're right, you know, the warrior, uh, the meaning of a warrior is, is protecting, protecting the tribe, protecting your family. But when they come home from war, war from having, uh, going out and fighting or whatever, they come home as fathers, as uncles, as cousins, as grandpas, you know, and, and, and they take on that role of responsibility. Okay. And this is something good. Well, I'm going to thank you so much for your call. We're going to have to let you go right there. We're going to take a break right now. We're talking with Robert Pelgier. He's the founder of the Iron Eagle Project. He's our native in the spotlight. The number to call is 1-800-996-2848. We'll be right back. 